Ooh, what is up, guys? And of course, welcome to our first gym battle in the Lithio. If you guys have been following me on Twitter, you guys know that I'm right now a challenger in the Lithio region. Now, I have been challenging them before, uh, came quite far actually, and uh, last season of this, I actually was an Elite Four member. But I decided this time I do want to challenge these guys and I'm feeling really, really great. So I gotta pull this off and we're gonna pull, of course, a like Gary Oak, which means that I will need eight badges to come or go further to the Elite Four. But I'm gonna go for all this in because I'm feeling that this is what I want to do. And the quality of these uploads on these specific battles are going to be slightly different. I'm trying a different approach this, this week actually, uh, or this season. And it's mostly because to save myself some time, and I still get to showcase the game no matter what. And as you guys see, this is the team that I have. And we're going up against Cubones, or our first opponent here, who are, of course, the ground gym leader. So with that said, here is his team. And yeah, you know, while I was designing for him, or designing by default, the only Pokemon I knew was going to bring, or rather, you know, if you go in for a gym leader with ground in, in mind, then Excadrill has to be that mon, right? I was kind of hoping for Sand Slash, but we have an extra deal, so perfect shit. Uh, outside of that, he has Flygon, Hippowdon, Needle Queen, Camaroth, and Clyduel. Knowing that, that Clyduel is part of this team, I kind of figured that this is going to be a Trick Room team. It's kind of obvious. And outside of that, Camaroth is super dangerous, with that in mind. And um, it felt kind of like he was kind of mixed about it, because outside of that, he has actually Camaroth, or I mean Needle Queen, extra deal, Flygon, which usually are speedier. So, all I need to do for this match is basically keep Asumaril somewhat healthy, because Asumaril is choice banded and uh, it only needs to Aqua Jet Sphinx, like Flying is the only mod that can't withstand this possibly, and or, you know, Hippowdrama can't really retaliate, but uh, that's about it, and outside of that, Rotom is a very, very good mod here, Ditto basically here to snag whatever momentum I can mess up, Tyranitar is focus sashed, Basically to set up sand. When I saw the team matchup, I was like, nope. <laughs> no sand. And of course, Stoutland or Fulf, because Fulf. And uh, Septile is there because it's super nasty speed here. Ensures that it has a scar must have a Scarfer to outspeed it. So with all of this in mind, let's go. Um, What else can I say? Well, this... I, I, I wasn't feeling it going in here. I wasn't feeling it at all. I was getting like real flustered that uh, it could uh, set up very, very well against me. So with this lead, I was feeling that it's very possible that he could go for two protect setters. Feels like protect is the way to go. So I decided to hit one or Rodon's gonna hit Clay Duel, and then my Assumer is gonna hit the camera. I was thinking that that's probably the best exchange. Uh, he doesn't go for protect with his Clay Duel, which is awful since I am. Or rather, I am speedier than Clay Duel. So I should have gone for the kill on that one, not getting, of course, these Trick Room in mind. Because now it's up. Uh, so I'm feeling their power, or at least like a Fire Blast here with Force. I'm going to switch out my Use the Palm for, of course, oh yeah! Which, of course, is the Ditto and Snag the Levitate from the Clay Duel. Plus, I really want to see the complete moveset from Clay Duel. They usually carry Ice Beam, and I was actually very right about that. Uh, it goes for the power, which is lucky me. Very, very lucky me, really. Uh, as he goes for Psy Shock on, of course, my Clay Duel, or oh yeah, which takes this really nicely. Now, as, as I said, they're due to him staying in trying to kill, of course, my used to poem or a Sumeril. I get the Hydro Pump off, and that's Camera out of the way, which is awesome. Camera being out of this play really early is going to be extremely helpful. Now, he'll go to Hippowdon, which is nice, it's okay. Um, we can't kill it, he gets the sand up. I was feeling right, you know, I don't necessarily worry about it as he goes for a Toxic. Now, I have Rest on my Rotom, so it's actually kind of okay. I don't have Willow, though, for some reason. I had Thunder Waves, I didn't really overlook my team here. As he goes for the Ice Beam, and... Uh, smack! Of course, you know, Freeze! Yes! I was feeling, you know, I'll go ahead for a Hydro Pump and for the Ice Beam on the Hippowdon, and seeing, you know, how, how he survives that, I was thinking, oh, you son of a bitch! You're telling me that I'm getting free sacks so the Powdon can't survive. But at the same time, I'm thinking, you know what? Trick Room turns to go in, Sandstorm turns to go in, it might actually be alright. But at the same time, that is, that is really, really, really unpleasant. <laughs> because it basically means that uh, I have to go for Hydro Pump now on the Powdon and hope that I don't miss. Because the Powdon, whether it's like, even, even if it slacks off, 
Hydro Pump does a good amount of damage to pretty much too much damage, so I should feel really safe. And as you guys can see, I do land it, and my Rotom is still really healthy. So at this point, I was feeling, you know, we're gonna go for that sl or that rest now because there's no reason for me of doing anything else. I have to solve out the, of course, Trick Room turns, um, and uh, I was pretty feeling sure that my Rotom was. Well, the slowest modern team, to be completely honest, or rather, I don't know the speed investments, I'm feeling I should be slower, so by default in Trick Room faster in a Trick Room. I am not, and this Shea Force Sludge Bomb is just gonna whoop my ass, really. Uh, that That's not gonna work. Now, obviously, the Trick Room turns is now over, which is sadly too late, and I'm still freaking frozen with my own, oh yeah, or of course, the Clyde Duel. Uh, so Twitch is eventually turns out to normal and Fold's gonna come in because I was feeling, you know what? Let's kill that Nido Queen. Unhurling it, it's gonna die. I was thinking that it was offensive, it is not. But oh yeah, I was feeling his call and fought out and goes for ice cream and boop! The Nido Queen is gone. And that is so important because I'm not sure I could have taken that hit. I'm not sure I could have pulled that off. So anyway, he goes for Psy Shock. He does a lot of damage on me. And I say a lot of damage because. That was a crit, I was not feeling that that was gonna happen. Now, Exeter is gonna come in, feeling an Iron Head on my Clay Duel, I'm actually gonna switch out to Tyranitar. It was either that, or going for Earthquake to hurt Stoutland. But, uh, yeah, he went for an Iron Head, so, and that hits Tyranitar, and that's okay. And I figured it was better for me to switch into Tyranitar now. Mostly because that means that I don't reset the set, which means that the Exeter is not faster than Sceptile. I'm feeling like faster than Sceptile is kind of a big deal. It's very unlikely that it has um, uh, moves such as uh, or having choice scoff and like that. So he will go for the earthquake. I was feeling I pretty m I should be able to live it if it is jolly, because if it's jolly, then obviously he outspeeds me, which means he's weaker, which means I can survive that hit, and then retaliate would return. Now had it been life orb, that would not have been in my favor, but it was that like out of course Excadrill because we know exactly who was the superior sensor sweeper. It's no joke. Sadly, the Psy Shock will kill Stoutland, which is unfortunate, but I feel the exchange is very fair, and I don't care. <laughs> so anyway, his last two months of Clay Duel and um, the um, Flygons, I was thinking, alright, whatever. I'm just going to bring just the Palm, go for Aqua Jets with Clay Duel, and then go for Dragon Pulse with Sceptile, hoping it's not Scarf. If it's Scarf, if that were to be the case, I would still, with Ditto, of course, snag that... Um, um, if he has to go for Outrage route to kill my Sceptile outside, he can't kill me, is what I'm trying to say. But he isn't Scarf or anything like that. There's really no reason for him to be that. And, um, of course, Malik the Sceptile is gonna wrap this game up. And that is a trio victory in my favor in the double battles. And I won't lie, I suck at doubles, but having one person only using one kind of um, element against you definitely keeps our opponent back. And it's not like Cubone play batter really, or Joey. He actually is one of those really, really good battlers. I was feeling that, you know, I gotta be lucky. The freeze, annoying uh, as it were, actually did to some extent help out because that meant that he could actually attack with his Nidoking King or Queen feeling safe as I fought out and killed it. So, yeah, that was kind of cool. That was really cool, actually, now I think about it. But, yeah. Outside of that, keep on for that battle. That was a really, really fun game. If you guys enjoy this content, and like I said, it is a bit fast-paced, uh, and a little, little bit lazily done, but if you guys enjoyed it anyway, then make sure to write it down in the comments block, in the comment section below, and you will see the next battle when I've had it. <laughs> Until then, guys, take care, and bye.